Hello and welcome. In this session, we're going to talk about using Health Insight and Integrated ML uh, to power healthcare applications using machine learning. And we're going to be talking about using that at Bay State Health and TechSpring, with which InterSystems is partnering. So my name is Thomas Dyer. I'm a product specialist in the data platforms group at InterSystems. And with me, I have Joseph Cafone, who's a senior business application analyst at Bay State Health. So first, uh, we'll talk about what we're going to talk about today and what you should receive as a benefit uh, for listening to us. So we're going to talk a little bit about Bay State Health and TechSpring and our partnership with them. We're going to look at the InterSystems IRS sandbox that we've set up to support analytics and machine learning application development. And we're going to uh, switch over to Joe Cafone to give a little bit of insight into how we're using that data in the sandbox to develop an analytical model that predicts um, the emergency department visits for a patient. Um, and using that as a proxy for cost of care as emergency department visits are very expensive. So I think you should, at the end of this, understand a little bit more about how InterSystems and Bay State and TechSpring all together are partnering to improve care. And we want to learn how Bay State is using InterSystems Iris for machine learning applications. So a bit about TechSpring. TechSpring is the innovation arm of Bay State Health. And Bay State is a large integrated delivery network uh, that serves the western half of Massachusetts. And TechSpring um, is a, it works in partnership with not only uh, the providers and payers that work as part of the Bay State Health uh, delivery network, but also they bring in uh, large, medium, and small companies that want to partner with them on innovation. And InterSystems is one of those sponsors. So as part of TechSpring, since TechSpring draws on this big uh, Massachusetts um, delivery network in the western half of Massachusetts, it gets access to quite a bit of a living, breathing healthcare system. There's 12,000 employees, there's five hospitals for a thousand beds, 90 plus medical practices. And of course, it's working with a medical school uh, that's affiliated with the University of Massachusetts. There's a next generation accountable care organization called BayCare um, and even an uh, insurance company, Health New England, They're all part of this uh, rich ecosystem, and that really helps to bring a level of realism to the, um, the projects and the um, innovation that Bay State wants to do. So what we have been partnering recently with TechSpring on is as InterSystems has um, great technology that helps to integrate all healthcare data from many different providers, many different systems into um, their health, our HealthShare instance that serves the Pioneer Valley Information Exchange, which is a regional healthcare information exchange in the western half of Massachusetts that's affiliated with Bay State Health. Um, we want to expand that and utilize some of our newer uh, technology that um, around the InterSystems IRS data platform, which should serve as a really nice sandbox where you can bring in a lot of different types of data, not just the well-normalized, clean, healthy data that HealthShare has put together, but also bring information uh, that, that's outside of that system. 
For example, uh, we have about 900,000 patients worth of data that we're pulling into uh, to TechSpring. Uh, but in addition, Joe is bringing social determinants of health data and claims data that's not um, completely integrated within the health share um, environment. So you can do that on the right-hand side into InterSystems Iris, but at the same time, InterSystems Iris has a complete mirror of the data model that's in HealthShare and quite a bit of the data. A little bit about how we're doing that is that if you see on the left-hand side, there's the production health share system in Bay State Health and PVIX. Um, that data is copied over in real time as new data comes in by a technology called persistent requests that essentially batches up uh, the uh, database updates that are happening on the live system and shuttles that over database insert by database insert, database update by update in real time uh, shuttled over to TechSpring. Um, and then from there, we have an asynchronous mirror that um, the InterSystems Iris is set up as an asynchronous read-only mirror of that data that's in HealthShare. And what that gives you as a benefit is that InterSystems Iris can be a totally different uh, version than what's running on HealthShare side. So we can change the, the version, we can update InterSystems Iris anytime we want and leave the HealthShare instance completely separate. Uh, in addition to InterSystems Iris, which has some built-in machine learning capabilities of its own, we have installed DataRobot on-premise. Um, DataRobot is a partner of InterSystems and we're using DataRobot to give a very rich machine learning environment um, for people like Joe Caffone to analyze their data and build predictive models, analytical models on top of that, and then be able to use those models in dashboards or other applications that they build within InterSystems Iris. Another uh, element that we have is more for future plans, and we haven't used it quite at this point, but we have a large GPU that's embedded in that system that Iris will be able to use. Data Robot will also be able to use uh, to make the machine learning faster, and that's going to particularly be helpful for natural language processing and image uh, analysis, like radiology images. So we have um, a complete platform it is live, meaning it gets updates to the minute uh, that are happening in the production system. And so it really brings, uh, underlines that um, the, um, the close collaboration between this living, breathing healthcare system at Bay State Health and our um, innovation arm in TechSpring, where we can really utilize the, the real-time data to make really impactful dashboards at the same time, have all of the freedom to change versions of software uh, anytime you want and really make it an innovation um, experience. So a little bit more about how uh, InterSystems Iris and Data Robot can work together. Um, InterSystems Iris uh, now has a new feature called Integrated ML. And Integrated ML is a, a, a new set of um, the verbs for SQL in our SQL engine so that any data analyst that's used to working with SQL can now sprinkle in these new verbs, these, this new syntax that allows them to build, train, and then use predictive models from a variety of machine learning frameworks, one of which is Data Robot. So the benefit is that the machine learning happens right where the data is. It's very simple to use 
because it's just a few extra statements in SQL that analysts and developers would be very uh, comfortable with. At the same time, since it's running right where the data is in a language and environment that data analysts and developers are using all the time, SQL, it's just completely easy to pick up and easy to manage your, your models within this environment. Uh, and at the same time, InterSystems is not positioning itself as the end-all be-all expert in machine learning. Or really, integrated ML is a gateway to best of breed machine learning frameworks. We're bringing in market leaders like DataRobot. We're bringing in leading open source packages like H2O. We are also bringing in packages like TensorFlow and Scikit-Learn uh, that are running in Python. We're really making this kind of a, a very open system to the extent that we can. As you see on the right, DataRobot provides a very rich user interface. Um, and this is completely available to the developers as they go back and forth between an environment where they're writing code in SQL on the left, but then if they want to dig in interactively and look at um, model performance and troubleshoot data issues, because uh, there's a lot of um, exploratory data analysis functionality that DataRobot provides in a very nice, uh, easy to use graphical user interface, uh, the, the developers are free to do that. And so we're, um, we're really exploring this capability with Joe, and he can tell you a little bit more about how he's using integrated ML um, in a little bit. All right, Joe. So do you want to show us now a little bit about uh, the first kind of project we're looking at? Uh, that data that's in the sandbox now and uh, how we're connecting to it and and what we're trying to achieve with it? Sure. Uh, I'd be happy to, Tom. So we have uh, we have Iris installed uh, in our sandbox, the health insight data, uh, which is basically that series of relational tables, provides with a ton of uh, detail around patients and procedures. So we wanted to harness that to go through our first scenario of uh, machine learning and see what we can do to estimate uh, ED readmits based on what we know about patients now uh, in the next 90 days from whatever point in time we're at, just to build a likelihood model. So, okay. uh, and, and so with those ED readmits, yeah. um, what is the what is the reason to focus on those? Why why are those important? So so ED readmits is a it's a great uh, analogous metric to cost of care, and in our uh, in our health insights data, we uh, we have a ton of patient centric values around their encounters and um, and their social determinants and attributes. And so we basically want to uh, stay within our health insight little bubble and uh, develop an analogous metric to, uh, you know, impact on cost of care from uh, patient behaviors and what we can do to predict that going forward. Okay. So, um, so why don't you show us uh, a little bit about uh, how you're accessing that data and, and what you've put together. So uh, the, like I said before, the health insight tables are all relational. Um, they have uh, they have a nice way of joining together. Uh, if anybody here is familiar with them, then you can uh, you can certainly recreate exactly what I have here. Uh, if you have the first little community, uh, you can actually pull in usage statistics uh, for patients as well, their usage activity, which I find uh, to be very valuable because it's uh, it's another level of engagement that you don't necessarily think about when, when you're looking at uh, patient lifestyle, but they're using it. And we have a great uh, patient base here so on the portal, and so we figured let's pull that in as well. But basically, it's 
It's all health insight or all health share data on the back end, um, joined on by uh, the master patient index. So that is our um, our detail of patients. And this data set that I'm using is uh, one row per patient uh, with a ton of variables. And I'll actually scroll down. You can get a look at some of the some of the fields we have in here. So I'm just basically pulling an example of some of the, the first five rows of this data set. But um, you can see things in here like uh, there's a personality segment as far as their uh, their behavior around healthcare. Uh, age, gender, marital status, insurance relationship. Again, all these things are found in, in your health insight data. Um, you get into your encounters and your obs uh, your outpatient encounters and your emergency encounters and inpatient, your observations during those encounters. The, the list goes on. There's Here, there's 75 variables being represented. I'm in this data set. I'm probably going to uh, build a model around 70 of them. And uh, I was just basically going to walk you through that. Great. So one thing, Joe, that I'm noticing about this data set is it doesn't look like you have the name of the patient. Um, can you comment on how this relates to HIPAA? Is this is this a de-identified data set essentially? Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, there's um, age and it's based on the year, and there's gender, but that um, this. ID is just basically a row ID, and that uh, DRID is essentially um, an arbitrary mapping that I have uh, linking back to a table on my other end uh, for me to be able to get into the patient detail. But looking at this, there's it'd be, you'd, you'd be hard pressed to find the patient. Very cool. So uh, with that said, basically, um, I wanted to first uh, you know, after looking at some of the data uh, and, and understanding the the variable I wanted to predict uh, and understand the distribution of the variable, I found that it was probably uh, beneficial. And, and Tom, you were in on this decision too that uh, maybe we want to make it a binary uh, a binary predictor. And so uh, that's of course, you know, given the given the variables we have here, is uh, it was best suited for logistic regression, which um, the the IML actually fit to and found that that was the best model to do it on. Cool. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, we plugged these this data set in after removing some of the fields I didn't need anymore or didn't want. Uh, and it's always good that when you do create your binary predictor, you remove the uh, the column you mapped from. Otherwise, you can have an incredible fit and, and might look suspicious. <laughs> I did that the first time around. Um, but essentially, uh, you go ahead, pull the data set in. We we looked at the uh, above and below on the training data, and we basically pulled out a training data set and uh, fit to the um, to the training data set. And then we had a holdout for prediction afterwards and basically validating the model. So um, we use those data sets, built the model, and again this. This Jupyter notebook will be available to anybody who wants access to it. Uh, it's actually our initial template, and we'll be revising it as we go through this process multiple times. But um, it's really good. I find Jupyter notebook, uh, Jupyter notebooks, to be very helpful in this realm, just because uh, you can uh, change the tone of them and and basically cater to whatever audience you're looking at. But it has the ability of showing them what you're talking about. You can add in visuals. You can um, you can add in comments and, and split it out, parse out your steps as discrete as you want them to be or as your audience needs them to be. And it plays very well with Iris. Very nice. So one question I have is, who do you see as a, a primary audience of, of not only this notebook, but of course, as you mentioned, we're going to evolve it, uh, customize it for different audiences. Who might be able to get some insight from from what you're building here, and then how are they going to use that insight and information uh, within their jobs? So, uh, uh, I'm I, I have to say it's starting with the analyst, the one who's most familiar with health insight, and um, 
wants to get into this IML uh, module, which I recommend anybody who is dealing with health insight, uh, health share, and health insight data, get into this, uh, get into the IML module and start playing around. Um, and then you make it a learning process. So as with you and I, uh, we sat here and said, well, let's let's just build a model, and then we'll say, let's add in some detail here, and then let's pull out a training data set and and uh, and have a, an, a validation set as well. And then let's look at the distributions of some of the variables and see if we can clean them up to make the model stronger. And so you go through this iterative process and you build out a story. And essentially this, uh, these Jupyter notebooks become the pages of that story. And so I, basically I would say, make it a, a growing, evolving thing. Uh, mm -hmm. as, because this is a change, this is a, this is a game changer, right? I mean, Machine learning is, is uh, I don't know if you attended the last uh, global summit for systems, but Vivek Wagwa talked about it and said, you know, basically nobody's doing it. And you guys have to not be afraid to fail or be overwhelmed at first and make the whole thing a learning process and, and you know, ramp it up. But uh, any, so to answer your question in short, this is for anybody. You just, you cater the content of it for the party you want to uh, consume it, but but make it for every party. Very nice. Because you know, it's it's pretty straightforward to learn Jupiter, and uh, and if you get familiar with Python, uh, it makes it very very simple, and it's a fun language to learn. Yes, very much so. Yes, and InterSystems uh, Iris is is moving in the direction of being a more complete uh, analyst tool. Mm -hmm. uh, not only with this uh, IML or integrated ML, uh, where we package the machine learning uh, close to the data right in SQL, but also we're developing um, a Python, uh, embedded Python capability to where you can develop your applications uh, using Python just like you would our traditional uh, object script language. Yeah. Uh, and that will be rolling out over the next year and it's very exciting for analysts that 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 work in python all day and of course python has a million modules a million different algorithms every statistical test you might want to do uh to get as sophisticated as you want yeah and i just want to say to that point for for people who are like oh I have this Jupyter notebook but how can I schedule it how can I automate this so this Python just has a module that you download and you can take your Jupyter notebooks and convert them back into Python uh, .py files and just schedule them have them run uh, and you just create a log file they output to and the rest is history so um, it's everything is possible don't get overwhelmed by this this whole new thing and it's just like you said Tom it, this stuff is available to you. Very nice. Okay, well, thanks very much, Joe. I uh, really appreciate your time, and I um, hope everybody enjoyed this demo. Yeah, and, and as we talked about, this this will be something that uh, evolves, and we'll, you know, this notebook is available to anybody who wants it, um, and uh, the and it will change, but we're going to try and make it as comprehensive as possible for a start to finish, loading the data to uh, evaluating the output of the model and you'd have it in one place and you can do whatever you want with it from there. But uh, you're welcome, Tom. I was, it's a real pleasure to work with you on this and this is a, this is a great experience even for me. Yeah, it's just started. Thanks very much. So thank you very, very much, everyone. That was really cool to see um, how Joe is using uh, integrated ML and we look forward to seeing more about that and data robot. Um, but you should really see now that, that by leveraging all this power that InterSystems technology is providing, not only with the real-time kind of updates and mirroring uh, from the normalized uh, healthy data and universal care record and health insight, um, but also integrated ML and its connection to data robot, we're really going to have some very interesting applications uh, coming up over the next year or so. Really thank you very much for your time. And here's a couple um, links to get started with integrated ML. Uh, you can go to our learning services website.
and get started on a, an interactive um, notebook session right there from, from our website. And also there's a GitHub repository that allows you to download um, a complete system, essentially. You download it and it uses Docker and Docker Compose to uh, stand up two servers. It stands up an Iris server and it stands up a Jupyter Notebook server. And they're all pre-configured so you can see how this works together in a notebook environment if you'd like. So I really uh, encourage you to check that out. I thank you so much for your time and have a great rest of your day.